It's 8.44 this morning. I'm delighted to say Mark Lawrenson is with us after a really sensational and very interesting opening weekend to the Premier League. Mark, good morning to you. How are you? I'm all good. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't know whether we start at the start or we start at the end, but let maybe maybe no Harry Kane and everyone's yeah. assuming, right, well, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens here. I hadn't realised that Nuno has a brilliant record against Pep and that Pep has a terrible record at the new Spurs stadium and everything kind of seemed to roll into one and they, they just couldn't score. No matter how long they were playing, it looked like they were never going to score yesterday. No, yeah, they kind of huffed and they puffed, didn't they? And I think, you know, with Grealish coming into the team, <clears throat> excuse me, that didn't really help. And when I say that, I mean, he, he has to get used to all the players that he, that he plays with. The last sort of 15, 20 minutes when De Bruyne seemed to get in the, into the match as well, it, it kind of upped the game a little bit. But as you say, they, they never really looked like scoring. And if, if there ever was a case for, we need to, to buy Harry Kane, it was yesterday. And does that make it more likely, you think, that the Manchester City hierarchy take... Well, well um, Daniel Levy, who I'm sure you all know now, is a... Uh, is, is a kind of man who wouldn't leave you a crumb on a plate. So you just know with him, um, if City ring up this morning, whatever, and say, come on then, what, what surprise? He will say it's X and it's X. It's not X minus, you know, 10% or whatever. It's That's that's the way that's the way he deals. If you think about um, Modric, Modric wanted to leave. I think he wanted to go to, I think Chelsea were after him when he was at Tottenham. I think obviously Madrid as well. And in the end, Daniel Levy said, Levy said, no, you can stay another year, right? And then you can go. And I just have a feeling that that might be the case with Kane because um, you'll know Jonathan Norcroft, who writes for the Sunday Times, etc. He's obviously got a big in there. And his, his piece yesterday morning was exactly the same as the Modric outcome, which was they're going to tell Kane he's, he's staying for another year. But telling Kane he's staying for another year and Kane actually saying, OK, I'll get on with it, are two completely different things. How does Kane instantly transform this Manchester City team, for example? If, if you look at yesterday, is, are, they need, are they in need of someone like Harry Kane for the deep-lying version of Harry Kane as much as yeah. the goal-scoring prowess? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, you know, deep-lying, play the ball up to him, he's very good at holding it up, as we know. Um, and that's something that Grealish is also good at as well, which I think is part of the plan. And just just on occasions to get them up the pitch. I mean, the problem that, that City have is that they are su- they're such a good team that, that you know opposition just sit in, and you, you, you end up on a certain. I mean, yesterday they just basically played in front of Tottenham, and, and well done to Tottenham. So that 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 base that is their problem is just getting near enough to the goal to basically create enough chances for, for all the players that they've got, all the outstanding players that they've got. But they looked they looked ordinary yesterday. I mean, you know, Ake, no. Um, decent player, good enough for Manchester City, no. Um, Sinchenko came on, um, not a great defender, we saw that as well. So, you can understand why they want him, most definitely. And this is a season where I think you know, the, the big four, so that's the two Manchester clubs, Liverpool and Chelsea, will all think they've got a chance of winning the league. And I don't think in the last few seasons that that's particularly happened. So I think perhaps looking at it and thinking the other thing would be with him is is, is matches against the big teams now, the other three, if you're one of the four, are going to be absolutely crucial. Your results, I should say, not just the matches. It did feel that there was a degree of similarity about yesterday's performance and the Champions League final performance for Manchester City where it does look good for a period of time and then you start to analyse where were the clear-cut chances and yeah. you count them in one hand. So, so why does that happen? As you said, that they huff and puff quite a bit. Why is that where they get to against some of these teams and are missing the final little bit of incision? Because the players look like they're certainly good enough. I think they overplay. I just, I, I just really seriously think they overplay. The other thing as well is you know, if you watch them, they don't they don't they don't take many shots from kind of 20, 25 yards. It's almost you feel on on a bad day, and look, they have relatively few bad days, but on the bad days that they have, it's we want to score a perfect goal. We want to show all the rest of the world we are, you know, an absolutely fabulous team, which which they are anyway. But you get that impression that they've got I'd love to know the stats on, you know, how how many goals you actually score from 
outside the outside the uh, outside the box. We've started, I wouldn't have thought it's it's going to be many, and that's a little bit. You know, sometimes I mean football is very very simple when 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 you strip it down, and if you don't shoot, you don't score. So I think that's just a, a basic thing. But that's I think it's a Pep thing, isn't it? It's a bit sometimes with with Pep is. He has to be the cleverest man in the room, smarter than everybody. And that doesn't necessarily follow, certainly, certainly not in football at that level. We've traditionally overreacted to the opening day of the season because it's our yes. first experience of football in a long time. But are Spurs going to be a little bit better than we thought this year? Have they got a hope of finishing close to the top four? Um, close to the top four, yeah. Not, not in it. Um, because... I still don't. I still don't think the goalkeepers, you know, that good anymore. Um, defensively, very, very good yesterday. But no, I don't. I, I, I think they've on a bad day with Tottenham. They are. They are very ordinary. And the problem is, you can't have to win this league. You can't have many bad days, as as I think obviously City and, and Liverpool lately have, have, have shown everybody. OK, well, let's move on because Liverpool uh, had Virgil van Dijk back and he was playing alongside Joe Matip. I think they played 11 mm. minutes together last season. It's a transformative moment for them and still they were relatively ordinary themselves for the first part of the game but the substitutions happen and suddenly the team sparks into life again. So um, a, a, a stereotypical Klopp performance uh, in, in some ways in that for a while they're OK and then they're brilliant. Yeah, but <laughs> you'd take it, wouldn't you? So... Um, it, listen, it's it's one of those. I think when you when you play a newly promoted team, very first game of the season, it, it's always a little bit not difficult, probably awkward as much as anything, um, because that team obviously play as though it's a cup final for them, and and it is because of you know they come up from the championship, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think they were always comfortable. I mean, I think probably in a couple of occasions Norwich got in down the left uh, of, of Liverpool's defence. But apart from that, really didn't produce anything. And you, you always felt once once Liverpool got into a kind of little bit of rhythm, and they started to create chances. The thing the thing with them is, you know, um, the front three, and you know, and, well, you can call it the front four, obviously, because there's Firmino as well who came on. But they they, they look very very sharp, to be honest with you. And I, and I tell you something. I mean, I I don't know how other teams train pre season, but Klopp t- trains his team like honestly, like like a dog. They they really seriously they work unbelievably hard. Um, he took them to Austria, didn't he? They, sometimes they do three sessions a day, all those kind of things. Because he has this big thing about if you give them that kind of bed of um, fitness, you're always never far away from it. And he, you know. This guy hardly gives him a day off. It's just all the time. It's kind of they've got to be at it, which occasionally doesn't work because when you get loads of injuries and everything, obviously then there's a real problem and, and your performances drop off. But honestly, when you when you see them training some days, you think, oh my goodness, like good luck with that. Mm. It, w- it was a, a midfield three of Milner, Oxley, Chamberlain, Naby Keita that started the game. Yeah. Obviously, Simicast has come in and slotted right in in place of Andy Robertson. Looks looks amazing. It, is yeah, this, well. It, Sorry, because sorry, yeah, cut ahead. him. But the other thing that I mean, I hadn't really seen him. I'd, I'd seen odd bits about him. Two footed. Mm. I mean, how, how unusual is that? You know, he, he's, he was just as, just as easy on his, on his right foot. So the way he looked at the weekend, I know he wasn't really really tested, but in terms of going forward, he looked just looked so comfortable. And if he couldn't cross it with his left, he just turned it onto his right and, and fed it in that way. So you know, if you're thinking. Um, Trent on the other side, it was it was outstanding. I thought on on Saturdays as the game went on, he's probably looking at at at, uh, at, the, at the Greek boy and thinking, "Hold on a minute, he, he could play right back as well." So he he, he looks he looks a decent signing. I, I was just going to make the point: is Liverpool's depth a little bit better than we actually thought preseason? Yeah, yeah it is, it is, and I mean, you wouldn't have picked that to middle three, would you? Mm. In, in, in all honesty, when you, when you looked at it, you thought, no, no I, I, don't, I don't really think this is, is going to work. Listen, this, this is a big season for, uh, for Naby Keita. He can play. There's, a, there's no doubt about it. And you, and you know all the players are, are around him think he's, he's a real player. But, and Thiago's a bit similar insofar as they get in and get injured. Um, and Matip's another one. So, you know, all those three guys are, are, are very, very 
good players. I mean, Thiago, Thiago's an outstanding player. But therein lies the problem, which obviously something that Klopp's are wary of, is that they tend to get injured and they don't get they don't have a little calf strain. They're out for like six weeks, two months, all those kind of things. So, um, you know, Henderson will be back in, won't he? And, and Jones, etc. So I still think they need another... Well, they, they know they need another midfield player. Whether they'll get one, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who's available anymore now. Getting Van Dijk on a brand new contract before he's made his competitive return from an ACL injury speaks volumes about the confidence that Liverpool have in his comeback. How did he look yeah. to you? How was he moving, in your opinion? Oh, he was just, he's just... He was he was had his slippers on and, his, and a cigar, didn't he, for, mo- for most of the game. He wasn't really... Wasn't really tested, but it's it's one of those. It'll 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 take a while for him. I think it will what almost ten months. But I think the biggest thing is not so much that people would, you know, inside the club would analyse the way that he played. It would be the way that he moved, and also that you know when when there's a challenge to be made, he made that challenge. And when you when you have a really serious serious injury like that, it's that it's that challenge where you think you go into a tackle and you think. I might get injured, and he just—he he, just—it was easy for him in the end. But there, there'll be there'll be more difficult tests, most most definitely. But what it what it is when he plays with Matip, he makes Matip such a such a better player because Matip's, I think he's he's got like a real kind of almost insular personality. He's not a talker when he plays, etc. But he knows when he's with Van Dijk, he can come out on sorties into midfield. And that's what he did at the weekend. I thought he was one of the best players because he came into the Norwich midfield and he engaged one of their midfield players and he was releasing uh, Trent down the right-hand side and other people as well. And he just becomes a better player. It's almost like I've got my guardian with me. I can go out and play and I know everything behind me is going to be absolutely fine. Um, can I ask you a little bit about uh, David Moyes, West Ham? The level you of can. the level of excitement around them, and the performance, yeah. and all the good stuff that they had last year back, and they're looking forward to a European campaign. Things have never really been better for West Ham. No, that's right. And he's, I know he's, uh, I know he's after one or two, maybe even three players before before the window. Um, spoke spoke to him yesterday after the match, and he just said he just said. Ah, just about to get the 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 insight on on how Moisey was feeling. He was ringing him there, saying, "Don't give away <laughs> any of my transfer." No, he's gone. The line's gone. We'll we'll try and get him back. Mark, we were just talking about um, West Ham and the sense of excitement and anticipation they have. And you said um, you were you were chatting with David Moyes after the game yesterday. Yeah, um, and he was he was obviously you know e- extremely pleased. Um, I didn't really mention the penalty. I thought that was really, really soft. But I think I think the thing with him is he took the players pre-season to, to St. Andrews and, you know, quite a lot of the time they trained on the beach and everything. And I think he quite likes that sort of, you know, let's let's not go on a tour. Mind you, hardly anyone could go on a tour anyway because of uh, the pandemic and stuff. But he's very much where he, he gets everybody together and I, he, he doesn't half work them hard. I mean, we, we, we spoke before about Klopp with his players, it's very much a, uh, a, a moist trait, which is they're, they're very, even on, a, even on a bad day when they don't play well, they still work extremely hard. And he just says to me, he's got a really, really good bunch of players. And he um, says, you wouldn't believe the attitude of, of the two Czech Republic boys. He said, it's just fabulous. So, I mean, I think they're both after new contracts, which I'm pretty sure they'll probably get anyway because they've been outstanding on the pitch. But he just says, those two lads, since the day they signed, both of them, of course, signed separately. He said they just work and work and work on the training ground. And they said and they stay on the training ground and work on stuff that they don't think they're very good at. And he said they do that on their own back. He said it's nothing to do with, with the training staff or anything. And they just stay behind and, and, and get on with this. And when, I think when other players see that as well and you start to get positive results, and then you've obviously got a really good, really good mix of players also. Um, but obviously, he just says they're a, they're a really good bunch and they want to learn and they work hard, which probably is, is you know, is why they are where they are alongside, obviously, outstanding ability. Who are they in the market to sign, Mark? Say again? 
Who are they in the market to sign? You were mentioning there to say he's hopefully. Oh, no, getting... no, I didn't ask. I never, I never ask him that. Then, and then if it leaks, he can't ring me up and give me a ball. Of <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Uh, mm. The the um, the performance of side Ben Rama is something that obviously last year came under a lot of focus. But sometimes players mature and settle in and grow into yeah. roles at different stages and there's, there's a lot of responsibility on him this year they paid big money for him last year and it, it kind of went under the radar a bit that he wasn't brilliant but actually there's an opportunity for him to really step forward yeah well you know Moise is the same with him he just said he's, he's worked very very hard from day one and he said he's found the transition a little bit difficult and as, as you say the thing is you know if you, if you sign a striker you just want him to score straight away because that's all about the, the confidence thing and he was kind of in and in and out, but he said he never he never had a problem with him with his attitude or his work rate or anything. And he said you could see he's, he's obviously got a lots of ability. But it's it's like when you sign players, you are really really lucky, you know. If you, if you sign somebody and you put him straight in the team, and and he hits it off because for many different reasons, you know. It's, so you've gone from a championship to a Premier League team, and. I, I know what it's like at first day in training. You've got to try to prove yourself to the players that you are a player. You know, you look around the dressing room and obviously you're a little bit nervous, etc. And you're thinking, you know, that they, they need to, sh- I need to show them that, you know, I've got this ability, you know, I can work hard and everything. But and the, the best way to get accepted in a dressing room is by coming in and, and starting to look a player and players will turn around to each other and go, well, he's not bad, this fellow we've signed. And that's, I think he's always had that, but he's just, in terms of on the pitch, he's never quite delivered, but, you know, I think Moyes thinks this year that he, he very much will do. Last one for me, is is Paul Pogba capable of maintaining this form for the entire season? And if he does, does that make Manchester United newly favourites for the league? Is he, is it that important if he can play this well? I'm going to go no and no. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, listen, it was, it, was, it was outstanding. But you just there's something there's something with Pogba which I'm not not quite sure. I mean, he, he just sort of played free at, at the weekend, which obviously you know with the four assists, etc. He, he looks a world class player, and he looks a world class player when he plays for fans. But and there's always a but, which is he's got all this ability. <clears throat> does it? Does he use it every single week? No. Is he defensively a little bit of a, um, a problem for Manchester United? Yes. I mean, they were really, really good against against Leeds, and it, it's very, very difficult. But Leeds were without the best player as well for me, Phillips. But no, I don't. I think the challenge. I, I don't see them being capable of winning it because I'm still not sort of convinced by um, by Oli Gunnar Solskjaer whether whether a at the moment he actually knows his his best team, and I'm just not convinced of him as a manager. Super, super bloke, but. I think there's still probably a lot of questions that need answering. How big an addition will Raphael Varane be in order to, to boost their title hopes? Well, listen, you know, he's a, he's a very, very good player. But have you, have you seen his record in, in La Liga in terms of how many games he's played, <coughs> excuse me, over the last five years? It, it isn't impressive. You, you kind of think he plays every single game. He misses lots and lots of games. Now, um, I'm a little bit worried about that because obviously the, the, the Premier League is completely different and it's far more physical than the Liga. I have no doubt he's, he's an outstanding player when you've got him fit. It's, it's easy for him. We talk about Van Dijk and everything. He's, a, he's you know, not, not too dissimilar to Van Dijk, but whether he plays enough games, I think, I think that's the big question mark. His, his kind of ability etc. Is, is not up for question. It's just whether you get enough games out of it. But then I suppose if you've got Lindelof and Maguire there as well, they, they might be able to deal with that. Well, we will see. Mark, good stuff. Thanks a million. Pleasure. It's Mark Lawrence giving us some thoughts there this morning. We didn't even get into Arsenal. How, how Arsenal were Arsenal on Friday night on? <sighs> Unbelievably Arsenal, to be honest. But like, I mean, the, what Arsenal is has, has shifted considerably from what Arsenal used to be at the end of Wenger, which was uh, relatively decent creatively, could have put their stamp on a game, could control a game and then miss a heap of chances. As we know, that has changed drastically over the last couple of years to the point where they are submissive against teams uh, such as Brentford, as it were, on Friday night. Clearly second best. Embarrassing the way in which Brentford scored their second goal, a Rory de Lapp-like throw into the box, which is allowed to bounce right in front of Ben White, who cost £50 million, by the way, bounce over his head and then nodded into the back of the net. I appreciate that um, 
being a fifty million pound centre back joining Arsenal is uh, like signing your own death warrant. Really, uh, it's it's basically career suicide joining Arsenal as a centre back and I, I'm not hopeful whatsoever for, for the season ahead as you might be able to gather OTB will re- be bringing you live Premier League commentary every Sunday across the season with exclusive radio coverage we were back with a bang this weekend Stephen Doyle and Keith Tracy called West Ham's 4-2 win against Newcastle and Brian Kerr joined Nathan for City's 1-0 defeat to Spurs here's Brian on whether Man City or Manchester United have a better attack 